Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Hello, everyone. As you all know, my name is Yair Stein, world-renowned motivational speaker. And I want to talk to you all about yeah, sure. yourselves. Now, what's the problem that you are all facing? I'm not good at math projects. What am I supposed to do in life? Okay, well, I'm here to tell you, you can do it. All I see in front of me are winners. Now, how am I gonna prove that? Math. The answer is math. So what is math? It's enough to make a body ashamed of the human race. Now, you're probably a little skeptical. Let me show you on my board. So, if we want to take an example to really show how math can unlock the full human potential, why don't we take maximum area equations in order to solve this? So, if we take our example of a man who wants to build a rectangular garden using 200 yards of fence, let's try and find the maximum area. So, I've already gone and drawn the rectangular garden that he's going to use, and the question already gives us 200 yards of fence. So, we know that that's our perimeter. So, let's just put that right in there. So there are two equations that we need in order to solve this problem. The first one being perimeter equals 2 times length plus 2 times width, and the other one being area equals length times width. Now, we already know that perimeter is 200, so we'll go ahead and say 200 equals 2L plus 2W. And since we have a common factor of 2, we can divide 2 from all of our terms. So we have 100 equals length plus width. Now, right now we're not going to be able to solve for the exact number of the length or width, but we can pick one and later use it as a quadratic. So, let's go ahead and use solve for width, let's say. So, in order to do that, we need to subtract L from both sides, and then we have 100 minus the length equals the width. Now, we can use what we just have for the width and substitute it into our area equation. So we have area equals length times 100 minus length. Okay, so already we can see that we have like terms that we're going to be using to match. So let's go ahead and make it 100 length minus length squared. Now, we can rearrange this so that it's in standard form. So we have a equals negative L squared plus 100L. And now, if we take the vertex formula, which we know is vertex equals negative, negative B over 2A, we know that according to the form, our A is right before our X value, so we have that as negative 1, and we have our B, which is 100. So, we'll take it, make it negative 100 over 2 times negative 1, which simplifies to negative, which simplifies to 50. And now, we know that that is our length. So, if we put that back into the perimeter, then we know perimeter equals 2 times 50 plus 2 times length, or 200 equals 2 times 50 plus 2 times width, rather. rather. So we have 200 equals 100 plus 2w bring it up here 2w equals 100 after subtracting 100 from both sides and w equals 50 but we're not done yet what we found now is just the dimensions of the length and the width what we're still trying to find is our maximum area so we take 
what we have as the maximum of two dimensions, and we multiply them because we know that area equals the length times width. So area equals 50 times 50. So the area would be 2,500 yards. Now, we're pretty much done, but if we wanted to, we could also graph it. So we take our Cartesian plane, we make the y-axis area, and the x-axis the width for all intents and purposes. And we already know a lot just from what we found regarding our graph. We know that we have a quadratic equation with a negative x. So that means that we have a parabola that's downward facing. And since we know that we have our vertex as 50, which can't be negative because you can't have negative area, we know that it's also a maximum point rather than a minimum point, and it also faces down, so it, that confirms our theory, and that that maximum is at 50. And when it's at 50, the maximum area is 2,500. So we can already go ahead and draw that. We have 2,500 here and 50 here. We'll make the maximum point right there. And if we just wanted a rough shape, we can just go ahead and make it look like that. But we can find even more than that, because if we go back to our original equation, you could either have, when x is zero, you could make either the length or the width, width zero. So if we make our width zero, well, that's easy, because we just have it as zero right here. Let's make that connect more. And in that case, 2L will equal 200, L equals 100. And just to make it simple, we know that if you reverse it, you can make this zero, and 2w equals 200, it's the same thing. So our width could also be 100 maximally. And we have our graph. Another example we could look to if we want to try to conquer math is maximizing profits. Now, for the sake of this problem, we're going to ignore the cost of profiting, meaning the amount that you'll be deducting because it's not going to serve in our problem, but in real life, it does matter. So, in our example, a vending machine sells bottles of soda for $2, averaging 30 bottles sold daily. If the price is raised by 50 cents, five less bottles will be sold daily. Given this, let's see if we can find our maximum profit. So our equation for maximizing profit is profit equals price times quantity. Now we already know that we have $2 as our original value for the bottles of soda, and we're going to be raising that by 50 cents times the amount of bottles that will be added. And also the quantity is going to be lowered by five for each same x. So if we plug that into our equation, we have profit equals $2 plus 50 cents times x times 30 minus 5 times x. So if we multiply this through, i.e. foil it, then what we're going to get is 60 plus 5x minus 2.5 x squared. So, why don't we write that in standard form? So, negative 2.5x squared plus 5x plus 60. So now, if we use our vertex formula, which we know is x equals negative b over 2a, we have our b is 5, and our a is negative 2.5. So x equals negative 5 over 2 times negative 2.5, which simplifies out to be negative 5 over negative 5, or even simpler, 1. So now, if we plug 1 back into our original equation, we'll be able to find out what the maximum profit is. So, we have 
plus 50 cents times 1 times 30 minus 5 times 1. So let me just bring that up here. What we have is then 2 plus 50 cents, so $2.50 times 30 minus 5 times 1 is 5, 30 minus 5 is 25. And $2.50 times 25 is 62 dollars and 50 cents, which is our maximum profit. Finally, our last example in order to try to conquer math is trying to find the difference in times when two objects are approaching the same displacement. So our example is, if Sheldon and Leonard are on a ledge 20 meters above the ground, each with a tennis ball in hand, Sheldon dropping his at the same time that Leonard throws his straight down at 15 meters per second, we want to find out by how much time does Leonard's ball beat Sheldon to the ground. Now in order to do this, first we're going to have to find each value separately. So our equation in order to find the displacement or distance is displacement equals initial velocity times time plus half times acceleration times time squared. So if we put Sheldon as one value, let's solve for him first. So, the displacement in both cases is 20 meters, because it's 20 meters above the ground, and then it hits the ground. So, we have 20 equals Sheldon just drops it, and therefore there's no initial velocity. So, we'll have that value be 0, and the time is unknown, so we'll leave that as t, plus half times acceleration due to gravity, which the approximate value of is 10 meters per second, so we will put that as 10 times time squared. So immediately we can take out the 0t, so we can just have it as 20 equals half times 10 is 5, 5 times squared. If we divide both sides by 5, we have times squared equals 4, and if we take the square root of both sides, time equals positive and negative 4. However, you can't have negative time, so we're just going to reject the negative value. So, the time of Sheldon's ball hitting the ground from the ledge is 2 seconds. Now, let's try to find Leonard's. So, Leonard's value has the same displacement, which is 20 time uh, equals the initial velocity, which the question states is 15 meters per second, so 15 times t plus 1 half times acceleration, which again is 10 meters per second squared, times time squared. So we have 20 equals 15t plus 5t squared. Now, the way to solve this here is to make this into a quadratic. So, if we subtract 20 from both sides and then put it into standard form, we have it as 5t squared plus 15t minus 20 equals 0. Now, we have a common factor of 5 amongst all three, so we can go ahead and eliminate that, or factor it out, rather. Uh, so, 5 is times squared plus 3 times minus 4 equals 0. And then you can just delete, uh, or divide, rather, the 5 for both sides. So, let's move this up here times squared plus 3 times minus 4 equals 0. Separate that. And 
in order to do this, we have to factor. So, we take it as t plus t minus equals zero. And we realize then that two factors are two numbers that can multiply to equal negative four and can add up to be three are positive four and negative one. So then if we separate them out and have each of these equal zero, t plus four equals zero, t being negative four, and t minus one equals zero, making t one. But again, we can't have negative time, so we're just going to completely reject this root and take it as the time being one second in order to hit the ground. But we're not done yet, because we need to find the difference or how much time is uh, in between the two balls hitting the ground. So we have two seconds, which is Sheldon's value, minus one second, which is Leonard's value, and that equals one second difference. It's that simple. So what do you think now? I can do it. I can fix it. That's like saying you're a vegetarian. It's enough to make a body <laughs> like, less ashamed of the human race.